Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave and today we're going to be taking a look at how Arteta could set up Arsenal next season by taking a look at his starting 11 formation and tactics. Remember to subscribe if you're new and smash that like button. But anyway, let's get this party started. After a season and a half of languishing, Arsenal are on the rise and just fell short of a return to the Champions League with a major drop-off in form. Whilst responsible for that drop-off, Mikel Arteta's squad trimming was exactly what the Gunners needed. And going into the new season, Arsenal have a very promising squad, but how will Arteta set them up? During his relatively short managerial career, Mikel Arteta has shown himself to be a very tactically aware manager and has had success with both back four as well as back three systems and even a hybrid of the two. However, this season expect Arsenal to kick off in the 4-2-3-1, although this could probably be better to be referred as as a bit of a 4-3-3. In goal, Aaron Ramsdale will keep his place as first choice. The 24-year-old's confidence on the ball and ability to come off his line to sweep up and facilitate Arteta's possession game. In particular, his ability to switch the point of attack was useful, with Ramsdale actually ranking 8th amongst Premier League goalkeepers last season for switches of play, whilst his average sweeper-keeping distance actually ranked him 4th. This combination of modern goalkeeping skills allows Arteta to use Ramsdale as an 11th outfield player, allowing Arsenal to outnumber and overload their opponents. And in pre-season, we've seen Ramsdale getting involved in possession close to the centre spot. Whilst he does have areas he can generally improve, like his shot stopping, as he actually ranks in the bottom 20% of goalkeepers across Europe's top five leagues per 90 for goals prevented, Ramsdale is still a great long-term goalkeeper for Arteta's Arsenal. In defence, Arteta has a bit of a headache. Last season, Gabriel and Ben White formed a decent partnership at the heart of the defence. But on loan, William Saliba established himself as one of the best defenders in Europe. So what does Arteta do? He could switch to a back three to get this trio in the preferred positions. Whilst I don't see this as a long-term solution, I think we'll definitely see this at times this season. For instance, Jurgen Klopp's Liverpool have the tendency to struggle against teams that play back threes, as defenders can go man-to-man -man with Klopp's forwards and limit their offensive capabilities. Playing Gabriel, White and Saliba in these situations could help Arsenal pick up more points. However, week to week, I think White will move to right back as Saliba partners Gabriel. Honestly, this works better. Ben White is an exceptional ball player as well as a quick and agile defender. The only area you could say is lacking is maybe his aerial ability and physicality. A move to fullback reduces the need for physicality and can actually maximise his possession game by giving him more advanced passing options and greater freedom to carry the ball out of defence. It also reduces the stress on Tommy Yasu, who seems to have developed fitness issues. Having Ben White at right back allows the Japanese international to fully recover before stepping back onto the field. Meanwhile, Saliba at centre back is like a new £50 million side. Signing. Playing under George Sampaoli at Marseille, the Frenchman did a lot more passing than defending. In fact, Saliba completed more passes last season than any other player across Europe's top five leagues. His dribbling is a clear sign of his technical ability and is one of the 29 metrics where he ranks in the top 5% of centre-backs across Europe's top five leagues with Saliba dribbling past 27 players in Liga last season and actually nutmegging four. In fact, amongst Arsenal players, only Gabriel Martinelli and Bakayo Saka nutmeg more players in league appearances. His calm approach to defending is also a great foil for Gabriel's more aggressive style. With both centre-backs taller than six foot three, Arsenal will be strengthened aerially. And finally, at left-back, Arsenal have made a fantastic acquisition to their squad, something that we actually suggested Arsenal should do. Alexander Zinchenko is a fantastic ball player and extremely versatile. Per 90 last season, the Ukrainian international ranks first amongst defenders for progressive actions. His versatility to play and perform in a number of different positions will help Arsenal become more fluid. In pre-season, we've seen two distinct attacking structures. A 2-3-3-2 as the striker drops into midfield and both wingers hold the width and depth and a 3-2-5 that uses the left winger as an inside forward and the left back holding the width. Considering that for Manchester City, Zinchenko has played as a nominal winger and an inverted fullback, he'll be comfortable performing the same roles for Arsenal. This will allow Arteta to change the attacking structure in-game without using substitutes and make Arsenal more unpredictable in attack. If you haven't heard already, it is smooth sack summer. When you're playing in the sun, make sure you're scaped 
from your pubes to your bum. The leader in below the belt grooming is making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Their performance package 4.0 includes their signature piece, the Lawn Mower 4.0, which is the ideal tool for trimming body hair and it's waterproof. There's also your best friends this summer, the Crop Reviver and the Crop Preserver. Toner to freshen up your balls and anti-chafing deodorant to keep them that way. So dive headfirst into Smooth Sack Summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping by using the code STATMANDAVE at checkout. In midfield, Arsenal recruited versatile attacking midfielder Fabio Vieira, but I still think that the Gunners will start this season with Thomas Partey and Granit Xhaka alongside Martin Odegaard. This trio performed well last season, Partey anchoring the midfield, Xhaka advancing forward and Odegaard drifting to the right to progress the play and expect more of the same. Of the three, Xhaka is the most needed upgrade, but Arsenal have players in their squad that can rise to the challenge. Zinchenko could take his place when Kieran Tierney is fit. Albert Sambi Lakonga has been excellent arriving late into the box in pre-season, adding goals and assists to his game, whilst Emil Smith-Rowe played in that position at times last season. However, I think Vieira could come in and replace the former Arsenal captain by the end of this season, if Arteta continues to work on a 4-3-3 with free eights and inverted fullbacks. In attack, Bakayo Saka has made the right wing his own, whilst an injury to Emil Smith-Rowe could permanently hand Gabriel Martinelli the left wing spot. The feisty Brazilian has a lot of pace, trickery and goal scoring ability, a deadly combination, but Saka is the star. Amongst Arsenal players in the Premier League last season, Saka ranked first for final third touches, players dribble past, carries into the final third, shots taken, expected assists, shot creating actions, goals scored and assists registered. And completing the lineup is another new addition, Gabriel Jesus. Prior to his arrival, the signing made sense, but seeing him in pre-season should get Arsenal fans very excited. He's almost the perfect number nine for Mikel Arteta. With years of coaching by Pep Guardiola, Jesus is an excellent technician and tactically excellent. For Arsenal, this has seen him drop off the line to receive before linking the play superbly. However, his speed and movement makes him a deadly player on the last line. We got a glimpse of what to expect from Jesus under Arteta in pre-season in the win over Everton. We'll start with Saliba in possession. He passes it left to Gabriel, who carries forward. With space between Everton's lines, Odegaard makes a run in behind, which creates even more space for Jesus. Gabriel finds Jesus, who wrong foots Mina and turns, attacking the Everton back line. From this position, the Brazilian can go wide to Tavares, slip Martinelli in with a through ball, or cut in and get a shot off. But he chooses a fourth option and finds Saka at the back post, who smashes the ball home to finish. Whether he meant this or not is not really important. What is important is how Arsenal went from being contained to inside the final third with just one pass, thanks to the intelligence of Odegaard, as well as the dynamic and technical skill of Gabriel Jesus. Meanwhile, without the ball, he works really hard and presses from the front intelligently. What's really impressive here is that despite playing for Manchester City, who saw more possession than any other team across Europe's top five leagues last season, Jesus ranked in the top 9% of strikers for tackles plus interceptions. It's these kind of numbers that made him a favourite of Pep Guardiola, with his former manager describing him as probably the best pressing striker, whilst Alteta sounds incredibly excited to have signed the Brazilian. He creates chaos, he creates uncertainty, and he's always on your shoulder. He's always there to nick the ball off you. He's always in front of the goal. He's a real threat and this is what we need. The moment we give the ball away, he's straight away active and putting pressure and getting his team behind him. If it wasn't for Thomas Partey's injury that saw him miss the final nine games of the season, Arsenal would have got Champions League football for the first time since the days of Arsene Wenger. Since then, Arsenal have addressed a major problem position with Gabriel Jesus. And perhaps more importantly, they've got genuine squad depth. Last season's first choice fullbacks, Tomiyasu and Tierney, could find themselves a second choice. Fabio Vieira and Emil Smith Rowe are young European level talents, but will likely feature on the bench, whilst Eddie Nketiah seems to finally be developing into a Premier League player under the guidance of Arteta. This gives the Spaniard options when approaching matches. If he wants to dominate the ball, he can feel the team that is filled with technicians. If he wants to play two strikers, he's got Nketiah and Jesus, both who can play wide and fit into Arteta's system. There are still concerns over depth at defensive midfield and competition for Bukayo Saka, but 
there's still time to address these concerns. Even if they don't, Sambi Laconga is still only 22 years old and could adapt to Partey's role. Meanwhile, Arsenal's new Brazilian Marquinhos could burst onto the scene and challenge Saka, another dynamic left footer. Marquinhos hasn't played a lot of senior football, but neither had Gabriel Martinelli. If Arsenal really want a more experienced right winger, then Moussa Diaby from Bayer Leverkusen would be a great player to compete with Saka. With blistering pace and the ability to play on either flank, Diaby could push Saka to improve, but eventually feature in the same starting 11. With 25 goal involvements in the Bundesliga last season, Diaby was one of just two players to reach double figures for both goals and assists in the competition. Even without the Frenchman, Arsenal are in a very good position to kick on under Mikel Arteta. The players that they have signed fit perfectly into Arteta's system, and their squad is still very young. Whilst the likes of Jesus and Saka will grab the headlines, Arsenal have a very dependable core with the likes of Ramsdale, White and Odegaard, all of whom are no older than 25. But anyway guys, what do you think? How would you set up Arsenal and where do you think they'll finish in the Premier League? Let me know in the comments below. I've been Statman Dave. Check out Manscaped and sort your balls out. We'll see you later. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, why not check out some more content on the Statman Dave YouTube channel?